If you ask a child, even a four, five-year-old child, what do you want? He asks for a latest mobile phone. We got so many new terms from yeah, you. Yeah. We are digital immigrants. Yes. And they are digital natives. Yes. So that's my word to all the youngsters and all the organizations. That one, we have to leverage technology. We have to use technology, whether it's administration or the academic aspect or your finance. Since we are working on an era where, I mean, whether you are traveling around the world, you are in touch with your office. You are doing. all the virtual meetings so you are keeping track of the thing just through your mobile phone so technology is important you have to uh, work out that you know this is the right technology and this is the right manner in certain states of india i have realized ki wahan pe craze nahi hai bahar jaane ka when the peers are out they will just call them waja oh, aja you know bade nazare ne the <laughs> fine so they say ki hum to phase hain inko bhi phasaye <laughs> in uh, american and uh, european countries if you say anything to a child will just you know dial a number and uh, the uh, team will come and ask why did you say this thing to your child their parents are overdoing it you know even the child is reasonable or unreasonable every time saying no 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 all the time padho 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 so we overdo the things <laughs> Namaskar, Dr. Gupta. Namaskar. Welcome, welcome to the podcast. Thank, Thank you so much for taking out your precious time and being with us. For uh, I, and I'm very, very sure that this is going to be an amazing conversation. Thank uh, you. Thank you for inviting. Sir, आपको uh, edupreneur बोला जाता है and you are one of the leading or edupreneurs of India and probably not only India but across the globe. I think across your schools there are more than Forty-five hundred people working and more than thirty-five thousand students. ये सर सुनने में लगता है कि ऐसे हो गया, but it's a journey. It's yes. it's a it's it's yes. a it's a it's a long journey. Yes. First of all, we would love to know about you. Uh, what do you do? And uh, एक ये education में जो आपने एक uh, इतना बड़ा मुकाम हासिल किया ये कैसे किया सर? Thank you, thank you for inviting me and uh, it's a uh, Pleasure to be here. So first of all, I'll talk about the organization, जो DCM group है, and uh, primarily we are into education. So जो सफर शुरू हुआ, journey शुरू हुई, ये 1946 में शुरू हुई, uh, from a place called Firozpur. And in 1946, it was not clear that partition is going to happen so soon in 1947. So uh, first of the series. DCM was established in 1946 by my maternal grandfather however after one year of uh, inception Firozpur became a border town with usual handicaps however DCM never looked back but the school was always in the undivided it was in india also. yes yes the yes. land was always yeah yeah so but the place where the school was established became a border town okay. just 5 kilometers from pakistan and that time partition and subsequent floods in 48 then three indo pak wars in 56 65 71 i mean the organization went through a lot of turbulent times a lot of challenges then decade long insurgency in punjab so however you know like uh, as one says that when the going gets tough the tough gets going so whenever there was a situation which was challenging so the organization bounced back and today uh, dcm is one of the most you know progressive and uh, forward looking organizations in k12 segment in india and uh, uh, we are not uh, on a kind of a rapid expansion spree like what we usually see in education these days that you are just you know working on the quantity mm -hmm. so uh, the hallmark of this group is that you know right from the 50s 60s and 70s uh the school has always you know worked down out of the box approach whether it was introduction of computers or smart classrooms or adopting the technology or pedagogies so so we are working on creating new concepts of education which are purposeful which are need based and which are in sync with the future needs of the you know coming generation so 
So likewise, uh, uh, we've um, set up something in Ludhiana, which is totally focused on entrepreneurship. We are setting up something near Chandigarh, which is totally focused on AI. So, so likewise, we are creating uh, specialized schools, uh, which have a particular focus. Not that, I mean, you know, we are taking into account all the aspects, all the curriculum aspects, you know, um, it might be a preparation for competitive exam or uh, sports or uh, literature or music or performing arts. So we're taking care of all the aspects, but uh, a kind of, you can say, uh, jack of all, master of few. So that's how and uh, uh, about myself, you know, I... Uh, um, did environmental engineering. So, but being the only child of my parents, so though I wanted to uh, set up uh, some industry and get into manufacturing and real estate, however, uh, you know, there was uh, kind of an inner calling to carry on this legacy of uh, seven decades. So, I ventured into education initially with the thought that, you know, I'll let me consolidate let me, you know, uh, bring some professionalism into the various departments. However, right from day one, when I got into uh, shoes of an entrepreneur, so it, it was, was 1997. Yeah, yeah, it was. I I was 21. Okay. So it was both challenging and exciting. Okay. So since that time, I've been, you know, like uh, working mm -hmm. in this space. And uh, as you as you mentioned that you you've started a school for entrepreneurship. Yes, it's it's a very novel concept, yes. and I don't think so much people or much schools are there in the world. No, in fact, this. this is the world's first school of entrepreneurship in the K twelve segment. You see, idea is that uh, I mean, if I talk about the country, we are a developing nation. Fine. However, we have to take the nation from a developing nation to a developed nation. Fine. If we have to make India and manufacturing hub like uh, Make in India or Digital India, or if we are working on a trillion dollar economy, you know, fine. So, so we have to, uh, uh, you know, move from job seekers to job providers rather than depending on people coming from various parts of the world. If you'll see the data, we have a lot of Indians who are heading the MNCs, like mm -hmm. most of the top Fortune 500 companies or MNCs, they are headed by Indians. It might be Google or it might be Adobe or uh, so many of that sort. But how many Indian MNCs are there? Hardly That's very true. few. I mean, so, so this thing has been striking my mind that, you know, we need to create a, you know, kind of a culture where, you know, the next generation uh, which is going to take India into the 100th year of independence we are able to empower them. We are able to skill them, you know, not just, uh, you know, like, uh, um, um, you know, like you say, from marks to making a mark. Fine. Marks to making a mark. Indian parenting have always been shy of taking risk. Yes. They have been looking for a very, very safe passage, which a doctor or engineer. Most mm -hmm. of them have never been thinking, you know, or maybe they want their children to get into IAS or something like that. But there have been very, very few parents who like their kids to be scientists or entrepreneurs or, uh, you know, uh, there are so many new avenues, you know, ethical hacking, cyber security, cyber security pharma like you are into. So the idea is to create an entrepreneurial mindset right from the formative stage. Like if you, you have visited yes. yes, if you come to yes, you will see a class five, six grader pitching amazing ideas which are not just business ideas, which are socially relevant ideas. So, so if the children, they are independent, they realize their self-worth, you know, they are uh, financially literate, they understand the legal aspects, they understand the HR aspects, they are tech savvy, fine. I think these are the skills, you know, creativity, collaboration, critical thinking. They need these skills. They just don't uh, uh, need marks or degrees. If we are able to give them the good communication skills, you know, good problem solving skills, fine. So, I mean, they are sorted out. So, that is the vision of uh, this world's first school of entrepreneurship uh, that, you know, and, and uh, I mean, I'm extremely happy to share 
that you know these kids in class 7th and 8th they are already thinking of their own startups they are getting seed money they are being incubated within the school so nobody had ever imagined because our concept of school has always been english hindi punjabi history. social <laughs> science history so so we have to make a transition from that stereotyped and you know conservative approach to a more uh, you know a kind of a global uh, vision oriented approach so that our companies are our, our people you know they are able to export their products so so we have also started from uh, prototype to product where children are working we also set up this uh, um a uh, first uh, aviation modeling lab within the campus aviation modeling lab yeah yeah with children are working on the space they are working on you know making drones and uh, also i like to share that we've set up world school of ethics and etiquette fine wasets so wow. so we are working on these concepts which i think are really required uh, for this uh, younger generation so what whatever i have been thinking in my imagination you have already done so yes. this this is this is jo aap kar rahe ho ye cheez ek aisi hai jo uh, abhi bhi aaj ki date mein bhi bahut log imagine nahi kar sakte ki aisi koi cheez hogi and yes. you have already done that yes. and so many students or kids they are able to get seed money when they are in grade 7 8 yes. and start their startups at a formative age yes. and hota kya hai sir ki jaise abhi bhi school mein jab jana hai to wohi syllabus hai wohi sab kuch hai but jaise yours is the first school and probably one of the few schools only so yeah abhi bhi majority schools waisi hi hain jo i think now there is increasing realization mm-hmm. so there are schools uh, like uh, entrepreneurship was happening at the college and university level but it was not existing at the school level yes. but after yes has been set up lot of schools are taking to entrepreneurship uh, some of them are uh, teaching entrepreneurship as a vocational subject however uh, there is no like you know um, meeting the successful startups you know we have uh, set up a y hub in the campus where there are separate pitching rooms incubation center so uh, in case you are serious about entrepreneurship so you have to go professional way it cannot be kind of uh, inculcated in a casual way or kind of an add on so we've spent lot of time you know almost 2 3 years on creating the curriculum for entrepreneurship and uh, we've been very very mindful of the fact that we are not going overboard fine because uh, at that tender age i mean we are exposing them to things which they can absorb not that something which becomes a kind of a stress for them so so the entrepreneurship is being taught through quizzes through games at a small age and a lot of innovative practices have been brought in so um, i think uh, um, uh, like recently a team from australia had come finnish guys came so all over the world this thing has created a buzz actually uh, abhi bhi sir i'm so uh, i'm so excited you know knowing about all these things because hota kya hai ki uh, abhi bhi bachcho ko ye padhaya jata hai ki acche marks lo theek hai montessori systems aa gaye hain dusre systems aa gaye hain thoda better ho gaya बट ऑन्टरप्रनोरशिप छोटी एज में बच्चे को नहीं पढ़ाया जाता क्योंकि कहते हैं कि ये अभी पढ़ने लिखने की उम्र है जो बिजनेस ये सब चीजें ये जब बड़ा होगा तो अपने आप कर लेगा yeah. ये एक थॉट प्रोसेस होता है बट वट यू डन इज कि जब वो बड़ा हो रहा है तो तभी वो थॉट प्रोसेस और वो एक क्योंकि उस समय डिवेलप हो रहा है विच इज अ वेरी राइट थिंग बिकॉज यूर वेन यूर वाइल यूर डिवेलपिंग आप एज एन इंडिविजुअल दस साल के बच्चा अगर बारह साल का बच्चा अगर बिजनेस आइडियाज लेके उसको इम्प्लीमेंट करने लग जाए इंडिया कैन लीड द वे यस यस दैट इज व्हाट वी इंटेंड टू क्रिएट सम ऑफ द यंगेस्ट स्टार्टअप्स इन द कंट्री एंड अनदर थिंग यू नो फॉर अस ऑन्टरप्रिनरशिप इज नॉट जस्ट अबाउट बिजनेस फॉर अस इट्स अ लाइफ स्किल इट्स अ लाइफ स्किल वी आर गोइंग दैट वे एंड वॉट वी बिलीव इज दैट वेदर यू बिकम डॉक्टर इंजीनियर लॉयर आर्किटेक्ट or uh, artist anything i mean every profession is good every profession has its own charm and relevance however if even if you become doctor and you have an entrepreneurial mindset so will you will not just run a clinic throughout your life you will like to make a hospital and then set up chain of hospitals like if you're a lawyer you will not just you know do practice you will have a law firm you will employ more lawyers and you will work in multiple cities multiple countries so so i think uh, 
ऑन्टरप्रिनरशिप इज अ स्टेट ऑफ माइंड फाइन एंड इट इज नॉट रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू जस्ट वन प्रोफेशन और स्टार्टअप दैट इज वॉट वी आर ट्राइंग टू क्रिएट आई मीन समबडी वॉन्ट्स टू सेट अप अ चेन ऑफ बेकरी यू नो और वन वेरी स्मॉल चाइल्ड ही हैज सेट अप अ वेबसाइट वे यू कैन बाय पपीज अ स्मॉल पेट डॉग्स सो वन गर्ल ऑफ क्लास एट टू गर्ल्स इन फैक्ट दे हैव सेट अप अ बेकिंग यूनिट वेयर दे मेक कस्टमाइज केक्स एंड दे गेट ऑनलाइन ऑर्डर्स so i think rather than uh, getting into all these video gaming and you know getting into unproductive things so uh, if they are focused they are utilizing their time well they are spending the money well i think uh, uh, they are on the right track is your school accredited to cbse yeah yeah so we have um, uh, cbse then uh, cambridge we also introduce australian curriculum so uh, uh, i mean uh, the uh, vision of the school is from cradle to corporate that you know um, how we can take a child you know uh, from kindergarten to uh, or you can say from classroom to a board room so <laughs> so i think it's very interesting thing yeah. and uh, if we are able to work on it you will see the entire mindset you know i went to israel two years back Mm-hmm. and as you know israel is the startup nation of the world it might be healthcare it might be agriculture it might be aviation so uh, they are you know like the kind of innovations this country has done and they are also into innovation diplomacy they are uh, you know kind of strengthening their relations with other countries by exchanging innovations fine so i i realized that you know how the younger generation they are uh, you know getting into the entire startups and you know a um, uh, lot of ad techs fine uh, we are also working on a, a total uh, paperless school fine where i mean you don't need to carry those heavy bags and you know those copies and all so that is our uh, next plan to set up a school which is uh, totally paperless and uh, ai driven and uh, also we are working on their mental well being fine where we have introduced laughter yoga where we have introduced you know mindfulness so we are trying to balance it out uh, in an appropriate manner that's very wonderfully said that when the balance is there everything blooms so nicely yes and uh, when kids they are uh, nurtured in a proper way so they yes. lead the nation yes. uh, in yes. in a, in a good way yes. बट अभी भी सर जैसे आप देखते होगे कि बाकी भी एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूट्स में बहुत गैप है कई बार ऐसे होता नहीं कि यार व्हाई व्हाई नॉट चेंजिंग लाइक एक क्वेश्चन मार्क रहता होगा यस आई मीन बिकॉज एज अ सिटीजन ऑफ दिस कंट्री एंड यू नो एज वी आर फ्रॉम बॉर्डर टाउन हैविंग अ नेशनलिस्ट अप्रोच वी आर नॉट सेल्फ सेंटर्ड वी वांट एवरीबडी टू ग्रो वी वांट एवरीबडी टू लर्न अन लर्न एंड रीलर्न वी वॉन्ट एवरीबडी टू अडॉप्ट कंटेम्प्रेरी प्रैक्टिस बिकॉज Uh, the growth has to be holistic fine uh, so uh, we don't mind uh, uh, allowing people to visit our campus you know anybody needing any help like we have hotel tinkering labs so a uh, lot of times children from the government schools schools of the neighborhood so they are uh, you know like uh, uh, brought to our labs and uh, they are imparted the kind of knowledge which is required these days and i am regularly speaking at various national and international forums i also address lot of principals lot of promoters and uh, where my singular agenda is to motivate them to bring them from that old conventional uh, uh, you know uh, thought process to a more uh, you know a kind of futuristic uh, approach so lot of people we've been able to you know like uh, change that way and i'm happy that you know slowly and steadily people are realizing that you know i mean change is the only constant in life very well yeah. said change is the only constant in yes. life yes. and when you accept change then you are able to evolve as per yes. the world yes. is evolving yes. so yes. as you mentioned ai so ai is technically a buzzword now it is yeah. yeah, yeah. and uh, at the same time but it's the need of the hour that in every field ai is required and you're yes. planning something in yes. ai yes so how would you um, um, suggest everyone to inculcate while while growing up or anywhere in life to uh, 
take ai as a very important subject in life you see uh, this is an era of emerging technologies um uh, earlier the first industrial revolution came when we started using steam as a source of energy we had steam engines steam press everything was driven by steam fine second industrial revolution came when we started using electrical energy you know the electrical yes. products electrical engine electrical radios electrically operated uh, yes. you know manufacturing units third revolution came when we started using internet yes fine and this is the fourth industrial revolution we call it ir 4.0 which is an era of emerging technologies it is not about the technology in its recent avatar technology is changing so rapidly so fast i mean in fact ai is also in its nascent form how it is going to evolve in times to come like we will see internet of things uh, i mean driverless cars mm -hmm. uh, the non living things communicating amidst themselves you know the human being having a chip now if you go to um an amazon um, or some other of its kind uh, uh, mall you don't have to even take out the your credit card from your wallet you just go pick up your stuff and come back the the machines automatically you know like they track the wallet the card in your wallet and they debit the amount of against the stuff you have picked up so technology is here to stay especially post covid fine we can't survive without technology now however we have to be cautious of the fact that technology is a double edged weapon mm -hmm. fine we have to use it properly we have to understand that we don't over expose ourselves to technology fine so that's my word to all the youngsters and all the organizations that one we have to leverage technology we have to use technology whether it's administration or the academic aspect or your finance fine i mean um, uh, since we are working on an era where i mean we working on globalization so whether you are traveling around the world you are in touch with your office you are doing all the virtual meetings fine so you are keeping track of the thing just through your mobile phone so technology is important fine you have to uh, work out that you know this is the right technology and this is the right manner fine so the the right use of technology um, we can't overlook now and yes. that's relevant to the education also actually that was my actual question which i was yeah. going to ask yeah. and you yeah. answered it very yeah. well yeah. that you need to balance it's a, we should not just uh, you know surrender ourselves to the technology we should make the more best so, use of it so we have to master the technology not become slave of technology yes that's very Fine. true yeah. like how yeah. we become like slave of our yes. cell phones yes yes and, yes uh, coming back to education uh ye sir india mein shuru se raha hai ki padh likh ke kuch bano hai bola jata hai ki aapne padhai ke time padhai khel ke time khel and education ko padhai ko hamesha bahut bada mana jata hai especially isliye bhi main thoda samajhta hu kyunki ek aisa time tha jab india was also evolving uh and education ke baad hi kuch aapko achhi naukri milti thi ya aap acche kisi level pe ja sakte the but as you mentioned that it has changed and now एक ऑन्टरप्रनोरशिप वाला थॉट प्रोसेस भी अब स्लोली स्लोली आना शुरू हो गया है कि पहले एक बिजनेस शुरू करने में भी बहुत अच्छा नहीं क्योंकि रिस्क बहुत ज्यादा रहता था देखिए टाइम्स आर चेंजिंग पहले बोलते थे कि पढ़ोगे लिखोगे तो बनोगे नवाब खेलोगे कूदोगे तो होगे खराब हाँ जी फाइन हवर टाइम्स एफ चेंज नाउ यू थिंक अबाउट नीरव चोपड़ा ही अर्न ऑलमोस्ट फोर्टी करोर्स बाय यू नो विनिंग अ गोल्ड मेडल इन ओलम्पिक्स fine so sports is also integral to education now i am heading almost 5 6 sports bodies in punjab and uh, we have revived hockey in our area also and we are working on various games like table tennis archery golf lawn tennis because earlier you know um, like sports was something additional now even creative arts performing arts so so we have to integrate all these things in the mainstream curriculum fine this should be a part of the oh education. yes oh yes i mean and there are so many things which we learn from the sports field fine which we might not be able to learn in the classroom so i think this creative arts performing arts 
your expression on the canvas, your, uh, you know, uh, love for music, fine. And uh, uh, I mean, most of the uh, uh, toughest lessons of life you learn in the sports field. So we need to, I mean, uh, uh, create a future generation uh, which have a kind of, you know, uh, both mental and physical endurance. Fine. Because this is a VUCA world. Volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. You never know what is going to happen tomorrow. So the only way to deal in this VUCA world is to work on the mental and physical endurance for which sports is essential. It's so exciting to know that it's coming from an educationist and you're leading uh, in a lot of ways. And uh, I, I feel excited in a way that uh, it's actually happening now. We have been dreaming about this since a long time. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're uh, leading the way so that the education system should change. Uh, if we talk about, uh, you're very passionate about your roots. And you leave your roots and you make your roots more strong. And you're giving back a lot of things to the society. Right? Yes. You're heading... A lot of organizations. And I think uh, roots are the foundation. Mm-hmm. Fine. If you uproot something and you know place it somewhere else, there are chances that it might not work out. So uh, in fact, uh, I do not appreciate, I don't say no, or I do not publicly say this is right or this is not right. We can't give any statement like that. But even to the Punjabis and the, you know, like people in the north of India, I tell them that there's so much here. Yes. Fine, we can bring a lot of changes here only. Like if you see your case only, I mean, they are just, you know, um, going abroad in search of greener pastures. So, so I will tell all of them that let's make Punjab Canada and not make Canada Punjab. <laughs> Fine. That's so, well so we can, you know, like from agriculture to pharma to manufacturing to uh, equipment to hosiery. I mean, there is no dearth of anything. So roots are very important. In fact, I like to share a few years back. That was the initiative of the Punjab government. Uh, in, in fact, uh, where you know we brought a lot of children from UK and uh, some other countries who were originally from Punjab. But they were second or third generation there. They had never visited Punjab. So we brought, you know, young boys and girls from UK to show them the Punjab. Because their perception of Punjab was totally different from the reality. It is fine. Yes. Yeah, they were thinking as if, you know, the drugs are sold on the roads here. Fine. Or if, I mean, if you'll come out of the home, somebody will kill you. So this is actually uh, uh, one of my cousins. He was here about a week ago. Yeah, and yeah. he said that th- this is a totally so, wrong perception. So I yeah. think it's very important for us to clear this perception. And for that, we brought all these, you know, boys and girls from London at the state government's expense. Mm-hmm. Just to show them the real Punjab. They were taken to villages and... Uh, like, uh, uh, I'm also convener for the Intech chapter, Indian National Trust for Art, Culture and Heritage. So there's so much of legacy in Punjab. There's so much of history in Punjab. If we are able to develop these places of architectural and historical importance, I mean, people from all over the world will like to visit Punjab. Find the land of five rivers. You know, this is a land of gurus. Find this is a land where... All the major wars have been fought right from the days of Mughal invasion. So, Punjab ke pal pal mein, zarre zarre mein ek legacy hai, ek history hai. We need to realize that. Uh, last week we had organized, since I belong to Ferozpur, a Ferozpur Heritage Circuit Rally. The idea was to connect all the places of heritage importance and make the people aware that, you know, this is, you know, what your roots are. And lot of people, they were not even aware, like, you know, who was the last ruler of Ferozpur? When was the city founded? You know, where is the Ferozpur fort? So we highlighted and people were so happy. And likewise, you know, we are working to develop and preserve other places of historical importance in Punjab. So that, you know, rather than, you know, going out, spending uh, lakhs of rupees, thousands of dollars, 
in you know going and seeing the statue of liberty or niagara falls and blah 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 mm-hmm. or jungles in africa or the beaches in maldives i mean let's let's firstly celebrate you know uh, celebrate our own country our own you know uh, heritage Roots. there's so much to see mm-hmm. so uh, likewise we recently because while we are talking about empathy we are talking about uh, endurance we are talking about financial literacy it's very important to develop the soft skills like empathy yes so we recently started a program called gifting smiles khushiyon ka karwa where the children were encouraged to share their old tiffin school bags uniform water bottles notebooks with the children who are not so privileged mm-hmm. fine we gave them new stuff also new bottles bags but the idea was to develop a habit of sharing you know mm-hmm. to to you know tell them that you know your parents are spending so much on you your existing stuff is not uh, spoiled and you are asking everything new every day your parents are giving because they can afford but there are lot of kids in the world whose parents cannot afford yes. so we are also trying to sensitize this generation so that they do not become a kind of you know uh, have kind of egos or uh, you know all those negativities mm-hmm. they are not self centered mm-hmm. they are able to you know take care of uh, the society they are aware about you know um, uh, what are the you know uh, what it means to be an underprivileged kid fine and uh, so that they realize the kind of luxuries they are enjoying in life so every aspect like uh, for example i'll tell you a very interesting story uh, i went to one school where uh, the principal complained me that you know the children have started picking you know some some stuff from each other's bag fine okay. all right which was very wrong so we started an honesty shop where whatever children required they were placed and it was unmanned there was no cctv no person the children they they were allowed to pick up whatever they want and enter it in a register so that we make them self responsible hum bolte hain jo sabse sharaarti bachcha usko monitor bana do fine so so likewise you know if you have to teach them moral values mm-hmm. so we use school cinema to uh, uh, you know kind of impart moral values so there's always a better way to i mean teach these kids and you know to work towards the betterment yeah, of the society parents or society sir wo old school methods abhi bhi karte hain aur daant dena wo chadi se abhi bhi there are i think things wo you see so, as an educationist nobody can do that because there are laws now yes fine even like you must have seen in uh, american and uh, european countries if you say anything to a child he will just you know dial <laughs> a number and uh, <laughs> the uh, team will come and ask why did you say this thing to your child so ab india mein waisa nahi hai but the problem is that you know um, their parents are overdoing it mm-hmm. agar bachcha kuch bol raha hai my thought is that you know if out of 10 times Mm-hmm. you know even the child is reasonable or unreasonable every time saying no 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 all the time padho 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 so we overdo the things fine so let's understand let's talk uh, let's agree to their point of view even if we disagree let's agree to their point of view and likewise they will agree to our point of view like knowing what they like and what they dislike so it's very important for us to uh um, go in a little more scientific way i mean uh, and let's not uh, kind of uh, um, push our whims and fancies on them fine so the children have to be independent they have to be self dependent they know these days they are a you know a digital generation fine we are digital immigrants they are digital natives they their toys are different i mean they have uh, you know the different gadgets fine the toys which we used to play with their toys are different if you ask a child even a 4 5 year old child what do you want he lasts for a latest mobile phone you got so many new terms from yeah, yeah. they are digital immigrants yes. and they are digital natives yes so we have to deal with them that way fine uh-huh. okay so yeah and uh, if we talk about some uh, migration outside of punjab to other 
country's majority most of the time it's it's uh, not to other states but outside of india so what is the major reason why kyon log jana jata i think uh, the governments of the day mm-hmm. they have not been able to understand the aspirations of the youth fine uh, we have to see the numbers also like in india we have almost 260 million students 26 crore school going students mm-hmm. fine we are the biggest youth force in the world we have almost 50 crore youth in india mm-hmm. so with that big numbers we have to work out on strategies on employment on uh, avenues on entrepreneurship so that we are able to take care of their aspirations we are able to take care of their needs from a young age as well yeah mm-hmm. so if if the entire ecosystem is not developed in a way we are not able to you know kind of productively utilize their energy channelize their energy naturally then they will uh, look outside you know for uh, whatever avenues or whatever they are looking for so one thing you know um, as a country what we need to do is that instead of rolling red carpet for all the mncs and you know all those high five brands so let's look for a homegrown entrepreneurs and let's tell this youth that there is no dearth of india is no longer a poor country mm-hmm. i think this is the biggest growing economy in the world fine so so we can absorb our youth here we can channelize their energy in india itself fine and that is why you know like if you are asking about the school of entrepreneurship why you know we are into sports why we are into you know training them for the armed forces fine so so i think we need to channelize their energy we have to convert our weakness into our strength fine when the governments are not able to do that then our youth starts looking abroad fine and uh, however things are changing now we are also working on the reverse uh, immigration mm-hmm. and lot of people like you uh, i mean yourself they are coming back to india now and uh, those parents who are not able to afford to come back to india they are sending their kids here fine because we have started something like nesfac nri students facilitation center where the younger kids for their schooling needs and all are coming back to india and i see the day is not very far off when you know rather are people going abroad you know you will see lot of people you know from various countries you know coming to india Mm-hmm. so it's not difficult i mean this this change of trend it's a matter of time only thing is uh, the uh, government needs to uh, engage with the youth they need to engage with the industry like what was happening from school to college to industry uh, the entire journey was not a seamless one लाइक जो भी बच्चा स्कूल में पढ़ता है उसके बाद यूनिवर्सिटी या कॉलेज में जाता है जो भी यूनिवर्सिटी कॉलेज में सीखता है वहां से जो भी प्रोडक्ट निकलता है इंडस्ट्री सेज दैट यू नो लुक अवर नीड्स आर डिफरेंट योर स्किल्स आर डिफरेंट सो वी नीड टू वर्क ऑन द एकेडमिया इंडस्ट्री लाइजनिंग फाइन वे आर फ्रॉम स्कूल टू कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी टू वेंचर इन टू इंडस्ट्री यू नो इट्स अ वेरी वेरी सीमलेस काइंड ऑफ एन अफेयर we need to understand what are the needs of the industry it might be automobile aviation hospitality and there has to be a, a backward uh, integration a backward plan rather than a bottom up approach it has to be a top down approach that this is what industry requires like supposing in pharma you are looking for 500 people with certain set of skills you have to tell a university that these are my needs and university has to design a course accordingly and you know this entire channelization has to be done otherwise you know like the universities are churning out students and they are jobless industry says that we don't get adequate and skilled manpower and youth says we don't get jobs yes, yes. so this so is there the is a disconnect yes so all the stakeholders the government the industry the educationist they all need to sit together and uh, and we say as a plan i think the new national education policy has offered lot of solutions but uh, the the solution is that we all sit together we think we engage youth also and we talk to them that what are your needs 
we talk to industry we talk to universities that how this is possible and then you know the school education the college education the entire skilling has to be planned in a way that you know i mean uh, nobody is left out so india is technically one of the youngest populations in the world yes. and what action we take today i think the results will come up after 5 uh, 6 years at least yes yes and you know i mean that is our strength which we think is a weakness that is our strength you see in lot of european countries the biggest problem today is loneliness hmm. it's aging countries they do not have anybody to t- even talk to the only companion they have is a dog or a cat we have so many people fine so we have to capitalize on that so jaise uh, jab bacche mein bahar milta hu jaise india se bahar kahin bhi jo students jaate hain so सभी का एक ही कहना होता है कि शुरुआत से एंड तक मतलब अंटिल इवन अंटिल डिग्रीज कोई डायरेक्शन नहीं होती बस कर रहे हैं कोई ऑप्शंस नहीं होता ओनली देर आर फ्यू जो टॉप के होते हैं उनको एक रास्ता मिल जाता है और वो अपने मनपसंद के कॉलेज से बट उनको भी बाद में समझ आता है दे वर नॉट मेंट फॉर दैट कहीं ना कहीं देर इज अ प्रॉब्लम इन आर पेरेंट हुड एज वेल के बहुत प्रेशर देर इज अक ऑफ अवेयरनेस एंड यू नो वॉट आई सीन द ट्रेंड इज किड्स जस्ट वॉन्ट टू गो टू कैनेडा or australia well, they don't know about college they don't know about university they do not have undergone any psychometric test okay ne bas bhej deo ji ha ji find the agent is filling the form agent is selecting the course selecting the university and after landing there they realize that you know uh, what do we do and that is why you know in the first semester itself 30 40% students they leave the school or the college or the university Yes. fine so at the school level there has to be lot of focus on the career planning selecting the right stream selecting the right subjects you know fine for which there has to be a ptc agreement parent teacher child agreement all three of them have to sit together and plan fine so it's like you know a, a girl who has never served water at her home जिसने आज तक अपने पेरेंट्स को आज तक पानी का गिलास नहीं पढ़ाया उसको आप एयर होस्टेस बना देंगे वेयर एवरीबडी विल से यू नो जस्ट ब्रिंग वाटर ब्रिंग टी आई मीन शी वॉन्ट सर्वाइव इन द इंडस्ट्री सो वी हैव टू सी दैट यू नो वॉट आर योर मल्टीपल इंटेलिजेंसेज वॉट आर योर इनहेरेंट एबिलिटीज अकॉर्डिंगली वी हैव टू सिलेक्ट अ कैरियर इट शुड नॉट बी इट शुड बी इंडिविजुअल ओ यस इट हैज टू बी अ पर्सनलाइज we can't uh, fix a square peg in a round hole so we have to select the right stream right college right place even if i want to there is no harm in going out for some studies and all but one must come back and select you know one's career uh, and no career is uh, good or bad i mean even if you are a chef if you are a jockey if if you are into some kind of uh, theater fine you are in sports sports is also profession now yes we have so many of leagues in various games happening so so whatever you do you have to be best into it pura dil se oh, yes. passion ke sath oh yes so as we were talking about reverse migration what i personally feel is ke jo bhi log bahar hai india ke bahar wo india aana chahte hai ye kahin na kahin ek denial hota hai aur wo cheez puri batate nahi hai ke hum log wo kis takleef se nikal rahe hain वो एक पर्दा ये भी होता है एक शर्म भी होती है कि की क्या के गया सी क्या वापस सो देयर इज एंबिशंस एक्चुअली बट आई मीन रादर देन यू नो काइंड ऑफ स्टेइंग इन एन एनवायरनमेंट व्हिच इज नॉट कंडूसिव फाइंड जिसको बोलते हैं सुबह का भूला शाम को घर आ जाए तो उसको भूला नहीं बोलते एंड यू आर कमिंग बैक टू योर ओन हाउस यू डोंट हैव टू थिंक ट्वाइस सो माय वर्ड टू ऑल दोस पीपल इज दोस हु हैव वेंट आउट यू नो फॉर एनी रीजन व्हाटएवर don't think twice if you want to come back mm-hmm. we have examples like yourself that you know like look the uh, india is rising india is shining fine Full let's opportunities. let's revive punjab jo jo ek punjab jo india ka taaz hota tha mm-hmm. usko hum log you know like we were the people who brought green revolution we are the biggest manufacturing of automobile equipment we are the Uh, one of the biggest into hosiery fine so we have a uh, uh, lot of artisans you know like uh, punjabi juti punjabi suits so i think we can revive our traditional industry handicraft uh, at the same time you know we have a very big it park in mohali 
uh, another one is coming up so um, so the kind of uh, enterprise the kind of energy the kind of vision the kind of hard work which punjabis can do there is no parallel in the world no wonder the biggest you know sacrifices were made by punjabis even during the freedom struggle so nobody can match this punjabi aura you know nobody can match the energy so we have to capitalize on that we have to work hard we have to uh, see all the future trends we have to work on our skilling of our youth and uh, uh, we have to look into certain environmental issues of course the depleting water levels and the pollution and all but otherwise i think we can work on rural tourism we can work on military tourism we can work on heritage tourism fine lot of people all the world they want to come and visit punjab so i said let's all get together and develop punjab very well said that yeah. let's all get together and develop yes, punjab yes. for for the welfare of punjab oh yes we are doing it it was very easy for us to go out i mean i was offered very very lucrative assignments portfolios i mean people from all over the world they've been asking what are you doing in ferozpur or in a border area or in punjab why don't you come out so but i was very very clear uh, from um, you know day one that you know even if i go wherever you know i set up my uh, units or uh, we work in any state or any country for that matter but we are not going to leave our roots so jaise normally log kehte hain ki hame jaise villages ya chote shaharon se bahar nikal ke bade shaharon mein jana padta hai mujhe personally lagta hai ki agar aap kuch karna chahte ho to aap kahin bhi rahe ke puri duniya mein kaam kar sakte ho place does not matter now when this uh, uh, i think uh, the internet is there even in every village fine so you want to work on zoom rather there are lot of advantages working in tier 2 tier 3 towns you get a uh, good you know manpower uh, the environment is good the pollution is less uh, the resources are available and uh, i mean uh, um, uh, the network of rail airports um, you know uh, the roads mm-hmm. they are so good now it hardly takes any time even if you have to go out somewhere yeah. so i think uh, you can leverage technology it does not matter where you are fine it matters what your mindset is even you have to go to dubai it's just a 3 and a half hour flight yes, <laughs> yes. so that that's very very true sir do tarah ke ek to hai ki jo reverse abhi jo bacche yahan pad rahe hain they are they are studying here and uh, they they are clueless right now unko abhi nahi pata ki humne kya karna hai aage to options kya aa jate hain like in certain states of india i have realized ki wahan pe craze nahi hai bahar jane ka बट इन नॉर्दर्न स्टेट्स स्पेशली आई सीन के एक एस्केपिज्म होता है कि यहाँ कुछ नहीं बना चलो बाहर चले जाएगा तो फॉर देम भी क्या दिस इज अ काइंड ऑफ अ ट्रेंड व्हिच इज मोर विजिबल इन पंजाब ओनली इवन इन हिमाचल हरियाणा जे एन के सो पंजाब एंड आई से गुजरात टू सम एक्सटेंट सो सो व्हेन द पेयर्स आर आउट they will just call them wo aaja aaja you know bade nazare ne the fine so they say ki hum to phase hain inko bhi phasaye fine so there are lot of pulls and pressures yes. and yes i mean uh, uh, there can be a different reason for some of them if they want to just be away from the you know the domestic environment or uh, some of them want to make quick buck or some of them get enameled by ki pata nahi bahar kya mil jayega जो यहाँ पे नहीं है सो बट आई थिंक दिस ट्रेंड इज गोइंग टू चेंज नाउ इज ऑलरेडी चेंजिंग एंड थैंक्स टू यू यू आर डूइंग सो सो मेनी गुड थिंग्स फॉर पंजाब फॉर फॉर इंडिया के जिससे चीजें चेंज हो रही हैं येस इज वन ऑफ दैट बिगेस्ट एग्जाम्पल्स एंड ये ये चीज जब मैंने फर्स्ट टाइम उस स्कूल के बारे में जाना और जब मैं वहाँ गया देखा आई वॉज अमेज टू सी एंड अब आपके थॉट से पूरी डिटेल में समझ आ रहा है कि आपका क्या थॉट प्रोसेस है अब अभी सर थीम ऑफ अ पॉडकास्ट इज इंस्पायर मी योर स्टोरी योर थॉट प्रोसेस आर सो मच इंस्पायरिंग फॉर एवरी वन हु वॉन्ट्स टू मेक अ गुड करियर एनी और इवन वो पेरेंट्स को भी कुछ समझ आएगा कि हमें अपने बच्चों को राइट थॉट प्रोसेस से बड़ा करना है एक आपका इंस्पायर मी मंत्रा वी नीड फॉर 
everyone, everyone, including the parents or the children, what is the right direction which they need to follow to have a fulfilled life? And India में रह के बहुत सारी दुनिया में कुछ कर सकें. You see, I mean, uh, there are so many examples in Punjab. People from Punjab, they are running uh, IT industries in their villages. Fine. Uh, we have a, a hero group from Punjab, Oswals. Fine. Trident. Fine. Sonalika. They are selling tractors in over hundred countries now. Mm. So, so what I will say, it doesn't matter where you begin. It matters where you end. All right. So, ninety-nine is not hundred. Let's try for the best. Fine. So, whatever we do, I think. Uh, uh within agriculture also because punjab has an agro based economy there is so much of diversification which can be done within agriculture only like you Agri know we can grow flowers mm -hmm. we can grow vegetables we can grow fruits we can grow you know very a uh, kind of an organic stuff fine which has a ready market you know across the world so we just need to realize we just need to reorient ourselves fine and we need to understand that you know uh if you have to sustain you have to grow we should not be complacent that i have enough or you know like uh, in punjab generally what i see you know the youngsters they think sade kol ta bahut zameen hi bahut hai hai sade kol 100 kg hai 200 kg hai you know you never realize when you are you have you know uh, uh, kind of uh, no resources so so let's not be complacent fine let's you know i will say that hard work is still the only key to success fine so whatever were the age old sayings they are very very relevant even now fine and let's be sensitive towards the requirement of the society our nation our friends uh, like somebody told me the uh, key to happiness in punjab is menu ki <laughs> you know i mean that how does it matter to me so but we have to change this mindset we have to help each other out 21st century is all about collaboration it's all about team work it's all about collective wisdom so we all punjabis we all you know people who are here and you know we will like people from abroad also to come back that let's join hand and let's you know kind of uh, um, you know revitalize The entire economy and the entire aura of Punjab. एक दूसरे का हाथ फाड़ के आगे बढ़ी है. Yes, that's the only way forward. Oh yes, I think it is very well uh, doable. Thank you so much for your time, sir. It it has been wonderful talking to you. No, thank you. I think you know initiatives like these, um, celebrating success is very important. Sharing success, even you know, uh, talking about failure is also very important because all that glitters is not gold. what we achieve is what is in public domain but the kind of failures the kind of challenges which we all go through generally we don't talk about that and for me uh, failure is the first attempt in learning fine so it's very important to communicate to talk to share and to learn from each other and that is the way forward thanks again thanks again it's been lovely talking to you thank it's you been, ji it's thank been you. so inspiring and uh, in future i wish to do a lot of endeavors with you and certainly ji certainly and i would learn a lot from you because i personally very passionately feel that uh, punjab can become great again no we'll all do it together thank, thank you. you thank you sir thank you thank, thank you, thank you.